Treatment of Hypertrophic Scars and Keloids Intralesional Corticosteroid Injections and Cryotherapy Figure 1 Baseline Photograph at Presentation in our SCAR Clinic Before Initiation of Combination Therapy with Cryotherapy Directly Followed by Intralesional TAC, 10 mg ml A and B Result after three cycles of combined cryo slash intralesional TAC therapy before initiation of PDL, C. Result after four PDL applications, D. No signs of recurrence or reactivation at follow up six months after the last laser treatment, E and F. Abbreviations, PDL, Pulse dye laser, TAC, triamcinolone acetonide. Acetonide. Figure 3 with intralesional cryotherapy, a specially designed cryoneedle is inserted, under translucinal local anesthesia, into the long axis and mid height of the respective keloid. Notes, the cryoneedle is then connected by an adapter to a cryogun filled with liquid nitrogen, which is introduced into the cryoprobe, thereby freezing the keloid. After complete freezing of the lesion, the cryoprobe defrosts and is withdrawn. Withdrawn Figure 4 result at baseline, A and C, and after 3 and 6 years, respectively, B and D, post-intralesional cryotherapy. Adapted with permission from Harsh IY intralesional cryosurgery for enhancing the involution of hypertrophic scars and keloids. A new effective technology based on experimental and clinical data. Journal of Wound Technology Treatment of Hypertrophic Scars and Keloids Intralesional Corticosteroid Injections and Cryotherapy Intralesional steroid injections have been used for the therapy of excessive scars since the mid-1960s. To date, three to four injections of triamcinolone acetonide, TAC, 10 to 40 mg ml, every three to four weeks are generally sufficient, although occasionally injections continue for six months or more. Response rates vary from 50% to 100%, and recurrence rates from 9% to 50%. Adverse events include dermal atrophy, telangiectasia, and pain at the injection site. The latter can be averted by topical anesthesia and slash or regional injections of local anesthetic around the scars to be injected. For older hypertrophic scars and larger keloids, the combination with cryotherapy appears more effective and currently represents the most widely used modality in daily routine. Indeed, combination of cryotherapy with intralesional TAC injections seems to yield marked improvement of hypertrophic scars and keloids. We usually perform cryotherapy directly before the injection of TAC, since success rates appear to be increased based on the larger amount of TAC that can be injected into the scar due to edema formation caused by cryotherapy. The use of intralesional triamcinolone acetonide represents the therapy of choice for small and younger keloids as well as hypertrophic scars and effectively provides symptomatic relief by reducing pruritus. Effects of corticosteroids result primarily from their suppressive effects on the inflammatory process in the wound, 
and secondarily from reduced collagen and glycosaminoglycan synthesis, inhibition of fibroblast growth, as well as enhanced collagen and fibroblast degeneration. Cryotherapy is believed to induce vascular damage that may lead to anoxia and ultimately tissue necrosis. A delay of approximately 3 to 4 weeks between sessions, approximately 3 to 6 sessions are needed, is usually required for postoperative healing, and commonly occurring side effects include permanent hypo and hyperpigmentation, blistering, and postoperative pain. Intralesional cryotherapy. Recently, a novel intralesional cryosurgery cryoneedle, cryoshape, Edgar Group Ltd., Kfar Saba, Israel, has been introduced. The probe which is inserted into the hypertrophic scar or keloid, is connected to a canister of liquid nitrogen, which causes the cryoneedle to freeze thereby freezing the scar tissue from the inside out, figure 3. An average of 51% of scar volume reduction was achieved following a single cryogenic treatment. Scar volume reduction of 70% for ear keloids and 60% for keloids on the upper back, shoulder, and chest was achieved following a single cryosession, as demonstrated in a recent study significant alleviation of clinical symptoms was achieved. No worsening or infection of the treated scars was noticed, and only minimal hypopigmentation was evident. The non-response rate of this technique was less than 3%. This technology demonstrates increased efficacy compared with that obtained with contact-slash-spray probes and may thus represent a promising alternative scar reduction strategy. Although this technology is relatively costly, it appears comparatively cost-effective, since frequently a single cryosession is sufficient, in order to significantly improve the hypertrophic scar or keloid, figure 4.